Hello again, Fight Fans. I am Jason Burgles for SureDog.com, and I am joined by a man that honestly, henceforth, should be declared Mr. CES MMA, honestly. You know, over a 15-year career, which included appearances on the Ultimate Fighter, the Contender Series, and Bellator, he fought for CES on 18 occasions, winning their heavyweight title, uh, defended it multiple times, the last time being on January 24th at CES MMA 60, which was also the night he decided to call it a career. He is known as Ribs, but you can also call him Mr. Ribello, just Greg, or officially Greg Ribello. Greg, thanks for the time tonight to talk your career in this MMA sport. Uh, thanks, man, for having me, dude. I appreciate it. Now, it's a pleasure. I have a whole bunch of things to ask you about. Um, there has been a... a, a a lot of talk, you know, with the unfortunate passing of Kobe Bryant about, you know, retiring numbers across across the league for him. You know, sports teams have done it for, for years and generations, retiring numbers of all, of, of all time greats. You really are Mr. CES, like I said. Having been there since CES number three, which I was looking at, that was crazy, you know, retired the heavyweight champion, you know, fought the 18 times, like I mentioned. Shouldn't they, like, retire your shorts or something you know maybe <laughs> maybe call the cage from now on the greg ribello cage oh these two men are meeting in the middle of the greg ribello cage something i think they should do something for you what do you think well i don't know man because if you look at there's a few guys that have had more fights than me in the ces mm. cage dennis piva and nate andrews i think they both have a beat i could be wrong mm. but i think dennis piva and nate both have more than i do so if those numbers to be retired it'll be them before me if you ask me so uh you know, I don't know. I think if maybe there's a Hall of Fame, you know, maybe I could be a, a second ballot Hall of Famer to get in. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, this is not the the first time you've done interviews when, you know, talking about retirement. I watched uh, an interview earlier with a friend and colleague in James Lynch from two years ago where you were calling in a career after the, the second uh, appearance in the Contender Series. First, what makes you feel that this, for sure, this time, it won't be something you kind of rethink like you did back then? Because, you know, you yeah, you'll be 38 in June, but you compete in a division where guys are still doing it and well, well into their 40s, you know. And second, you know, what do you feel makes it so hard for some, you know, athletes in all sports, in all professional sports, to retire from that career? Because, you know... I'm sure even for you right now, because, you know, saying I'm retired from something in your 30s, it's got to be an odd feeling. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, my fight in the Nintendo series, I think it was a lot more out of frustration. Mm. You know, I kind of thought, like, this was my last shot at getting in the UFC, so that was kind of it. Um, you know, but the, the other thing, you know, that you talked about is a lot of guys don't have an avenue. Like, there's mm. they just have fighting and then that's it. You know, when fighting's over, they have nothing else really to do. Um, that's not the case with me. You know, I have, uh, I have two gyms. I have plenty of other stuff going on. You know, I, I coach a ton of fighters. Um, you know, I have a big roster. I got Calvin Cater and Randy Costa fighting in the UFC now. Um, I got a couple of the guys like in Bellsmore and a lot of the amateurs coming up, you know, so I, I have other avenues of making money. Like I don't need the money from fighting, you know, to survive. It's just, it's not something that I have to do. I think a lot of guys are stuck in fighting, you know, cause they have no other choice. They have no other you know, no other way to make money. You know, I, I don't have that problem. So that's that's one of the biggest things with me. I love fighting, of course, but, you know, my, my favorite memories from fighting have come in coaching, not even mm -hmm. fighting myself. To fill that void, to fill that gap, I, I love coaching. And I'm just, it's, it's an easy transition for me, so... And it's and honestly, congratulations to you in, in that securing yourself in a, in a position financially to be secure, financially safe and good to go for years to come. Because unfortunately, that's not a common thing for a lot of fighters. Yeah. And, and I respect you for doing that. And I hope it's a lesson, you, you know, every every fighter you work with learned from. When you started this career almost 15 years ago, like what was your end game at that time? You know, was it simply, you know, make it to the UFC, become a UFC champion? Was it, you know, oh, I just want to have a career I enjoy doing and make good money doing it, you know, being famous, <laughs> that's always a, a draw for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and as you progress through your career, how did those goals evolve as you matured as a man and, and you know, had your setbacks and your triumphs? Like what was the beginning thoughts and then what? how did it change over the years? Yeah, you know, when I started my career, I wasn't really sure. You know, I was kind of fresh. I kind of started clean slate. I didn't, I didn't come from a wrestling background. I was a hockey player. Mm. Um, and I started my career like one and three. So yeah, I noticed I that, yeah. You know, so I came off to a, kind of a crappy start. So I really <laughs> didn't know what to expect, you know. But as the game evolved and, you know, and I got better and I kind of learned properly how to train, um, you know, you fall in love with it. But listen, if you're getting into fighting, 
the end goal has to be the UFC or a bigger mm-hmm. show. Like if, if that's not the goal, then I really don't understand why you're going to do it. You know? So that was always my goal was, you know, to get to a bigger show. And, uh, you know, I got to a bigger show. I came up short a few times like in the contender series, but it's, you know, I, I felt like, I feel like now I'm better than I've ever been at 37 years old. You know what I mean? But, you know, to go out on top, it's, and that's, that's something that I've always wanted to do. I wanted to go out and win, defending the title twice. It's cool. And I get to go out like that. So that was always like my goal, to be honest with you. And how did it change? You know, at what point, how many fights in did you, you know, maybe say, okay, you know what? I need to start preparing for life after. I need to start saving this money. I need to secure myself. Maybe I need to open up a gym. You know, how long into it? And, you know, how many other experiences did you see from other people that went the wrong way? Did you kind of start wising up to like, okay, I need to, you know, prepare if this doesn't work out like the way it perfectly I wanted to and still make out great from it? Yeah, I always worked while I fought. You know, I was mm-hmm. always bartending on the weekends. I always had other ways of income. You're never going to survive. Yeah. Trust me, I know plenty of guys that play yeah. in the UFC. You know, they don't have a lot to show for. Like, mm-hmm. it was just, it's a tough way to make a living, man. It's a grind, you know. And uh, unless you, you know, I always talk about that with my manager, man. Unless you make it to a second or a third contract in the UFC, you never really start yeah, making I've money. Yeah, heard that, yep. You know, so it's, it's definitely a tough grind. But, yeah, I've, I've always... I've always known that I was going to be a coach, honestly, you know, hmm. like, I, I don't know. I just, I had always coached guys even during my career while I was fighting and I always knew that I was good at it, you know? So I always knew that was going to be next. And, uh, and obviously having a couple of gyms with my wife, like it's, that's the best road to go to, to make money if you're a fighter, you know? <laughs> you're good at coaching, you're good at direction, and have a good following. You know, that's, that's the best road to go. And my wife's got a bigger following than I do. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, yeah, so, you know, uh, two of us together, it's kind of, you know, we, we've done well, and it's it's a lot of fun, and it's, you know, it's easy for us, like, it's just, it's, she was a competitor, too, as well, so it's just, it's easy for us, it's fun, you know, so it's it makes life easier. I mean, and since you bring a coach, I mean, I was going to get to it later, Bob, I'll, I'll ask now about it, you know, when speaking with fighters that I've talked to who, who started doing a similar thing, coaching in their careers, eventually made that transition to the coaching full-time after the fact, they've told me about the fulfillment they get from it, you know, that when helping someone else reach a goal, it, it can often be more enjoyable when they than when they've done it themselves in their fighting career and stuff like that. Is, is it very similar for you, more so, you know, is it, you know, do you get a special fulfillment from helping guys grow? and that process and evolving and taking the next steps is it is it really really as as rewarding as it seems yeah no absolutely you know i I did an interview right after my fight and uh that was one of the questions that they asked they asked you know as you sit back and reflect in your career what are your you know what are your top few favorite moments and both of them you know were one was calvin cater winning at td bank garden and the other one was randy costa winning at the garden you know i had two guys both win by vicious knockout at the garden which is a place that, like, if you're a Boston sports fan, that's, like, the ultimate place to play, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. So just being able to be there was it was unbelievable. I think my, <laughs> my daughter's having a meltdown. Her. I can hear her. <laughs> 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 kids yeah, that's, kids that's don't give a damn about, about interviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, now, you... you but, yeah. yeah, yeah, continue. Please so, but, um, you know... The TD Guard, man, I, like I said, I played hockey my whole life. I'm a huge sports fan. Mm. So being able to, you know, walk the hallways back there and see, like, you know, the Larry Bird pictures and all the old school kid. Uh, you know, my son, his name's Cam after Cam Neely. Like, yeah. you know, so, so I'm a huge sports fan. And, and being able to, you know, coach two guys that are fighting at a higher level than I ever did, you know, to, you know, both winning by knockout. It was it was something special to me. Like, it was just unbelievable, man. It was something that I'll never forget. And it's it definitely beats any any point in my career. Like it was it was definitely pretty sweet. Like you said, to see somebody else succeed and kind of fulfill their dreams in that like you know like that in that fashion, it was it was awesome, man. Does it make things a little bit easier? Because I mean, I wouldn't even you know be mad at you if you were there and you're like, fuck, man, well, I wanted to be here. Like a little jealous yeah. of that moment. Like, damn, I I could have been here. You know, it, yeah, does it make know. it easier to kind of you know get over those things that being with them, you have a close relationship, you know, appreciate it. Does it, it make all that kind of? It's not even a big deal at the time. Yeah, of course. And and the thing when I you know I think I said that to both of them. I definitely said it to Randy. Is I'm like, listen. What you're doing right now, you know, Randy Costa made it to that point in five fights. In yeah. five fights. Yeah. You know, in his fifth fight, he was fighting at the TD Garden. I'm like, dude, I've been trying to get here <laughs> for 15 years. Yeah. I'm like, you're here in five fights. 
I'm like, listen, take advantage of it, man. I'm like, enjoy the process. Because this might never happen again, dude. You might never fight here again. I'm like, this is this is something that you're not going to realize how important it is until it's over, until your career is over, and until you're older. Like, it's just, I'm like, this is huge right here, Randy, being able to fight in front of your, and, yeah. and you know, as soon, as soon as he walked out, man, that place erupted. Like, it went crazy. I had people throwing Reese's peanut butter cups at me, and it was like, <laughs> So you know, it's 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 pretty awesome to look at, and and then obviously winning like that, it was it was pretty crazy, man. You you know certainly had many triumphs in your career, like I talked about, CS a heavyweight champion. You you know you don't get to twenty six and nine in this game by luck. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of talent. However, you know you've had your your those gut punching setbacks. You know, be it the the yeah. losses on the contender series, the Ultimate Fighter. I know you fought to, to try to get into the house in that first round. Is there a specific moment that was tougher? To, to get past any others and, and really like just really mentally brought you down for a while. And on, on that, like, how did you get past that? How did you overcome that? And, you know, it, cause it's a key lesson to a lot of just not athletes and people. Yeah. Listen, that's always my go-to, you know, a lot of people, I, I train a lot of kids and when they lose big fights, you know what I mean? They're, they're always down and they're crying and they're complaining. And I say, listen, man, I lost in front of Dana White three times, man. Once on Ultimate Fighter yeah. and two times in the contender series. Yeah. And I was like, and, and these are all fights that I felt I should have won. And I said, I just, I didn't, I came up short. It is what it is. I said, so trust me, man. If I can come back from that, you can come <laughs> back from the CES. Yeah. Like, it's not that big of a deal, you know? So, you know, th those fights were all hard. But, you know, I, I, I would say that, you know, the last fight when I fought Josh Parisian, who's like a buddy of mine now, I talk to him all the time. And, mm. That was hard, man. You know, I I, uh, I went through three opponents again. It was kind of like my last fight. You know, I remember flying to Vegas thinking I was fighting Angel Deanda or somebody like that. And when I landed, I, they were like, you're fighting Josh Parisian. So it was a, that was the hardest fight of my career. Like I just, I was so messed up in the head mentally. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I was, I was ready to go, but, and I went out there and, and, and fought, but it was very difficult, you know, and that, that's why like after that fight, I was, I was more pissed off, you know, I was like, I'm done, this is ridiculous, like, I was just kind of mad at myself, like, I just didn't show up that night, and uh, the contender series is tough, man, I'm, uh, I'm one of those guys that, you know, I think, I have, I have a lot of people that have fought there, and they do well, because yeah. they feel like there's no pressure, they feel like it's a gym fight, well, I'm the total opposite, man, I need a crowd of, I need a crowd of people, I need people talking crap to me, I, like, I need, I need all that energy, that's why I do so well at CES, man, like, I walked out there the other night, that place was, path that was the busiest ces show i've ever seen the other night and uh you know people screaming and yelling like i love it man i feed off that energy so like I, you know it's 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 different for me i i need i need people behind me whether they're against me or with me like you know it's just, it's just fuel to my fire but you know the contender series is a hard show to fight on man for sure dude. so getting over those was not easy that's why i took a year off after i fought parisian and i was like i'm done and, you know i had a lot of injuries so I, I had a lot of healing up to do but uh those were for sure the hardest fights to come over. That's why at the end of the day, I didn't want to end on that note mm. because you always, I feel like you always think about your last fight, yeah. no matter what, when people, you know, and when you're retiring and people see, you see somebody at the market and they're like, Oh, Greg, man, I, you know, you know, how's the fighting thing going? Like I, I would always think of that. Like I am just pissed off, you know, <laughs> yeah. so I didn't want to end on that note. And, uh, you know, and I didn't, I went out on a couple of wins and uh, on my terms. So, Speaking in the direction of CES and that kind of stuff, you know, maybe so maybe someone in Florida or Vegas, Canada may not fully know what you've done in the sport and, and may just mainly know you from your appearances on the Contender Series and the Ultimate Fighter. But your significance to New England MMA and helping to push an organization and, and, and it's like CES forward is hugely important. You know, yeah, sure, you didn't get to the UFC. You know, you didn't get the, to win a title there. Like, oh, you didn't get to meet those specific goals that you had. But you leave an important legacy and continue to build on that legacy now in your neck of the woods. Oh, you know, it, it's something like that almost just as good, almost just as fulfilling as getting to the UFC, you know, because New England MMA is really on the making a lot of noise now. You know, the, you, you are a uh, 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 as a fighter and a coach, we, we know we t you mentioned Calvin Cater, Rob Fon, Costa, Jorgen Castro. a lot of guys coming on. It, it, how meaningful is it to have been and continue to be a part of this New England cartel movement that's going on right now from there? Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely huge for me because I've been there before all this started. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there when there was super talented guys around here that nobody even nobody even knew about. Man. Like I remember when Josh Grisby was coming up. Nobody even knew who that kid was. Like, that kid was a killer, man. He was destroying dudes on the local show, you know? 
and and people that you know they never really started to get the respect until you know when CES finally got on like Access TV. Mm. I feel like it started to come around, and that's when like Rob Font and Calvin Cater were really just starting to get signed by the UFC. So it's cool though, because I feel like yeah, I've, I've had a hand in that, you know, you know, helping those guys out and and helping out Randy Costa and stuff like that. So it's it's sweet to see that these guys are finally getting the recognition that they deserve. And like I said, there's a, another whole new crop of young guys coming up. You know, there's a ton of guys in Connecticut. There's a ton of guys in New Hampshire. There's a ton of guys in Mass and Rhode Island that are that are all studs. So it's it's pretty sweet that obviously it stinks that you know I'm kind of going out of that end, but it's good. I'm, I'm just happy to see that you know these promotions and the fighters are getting the recognition that they deserve, man, and they're getting an opportunity to compete at the highest level. And a lot of them are winning, man. I think that you know, you know, my manager is Tyson Charnier, man, in the Contender Series the first year. I think we went like 0 and 8, like everybody <laughs> lost. So it's like you know, I blame myself. I'm like, good lord, man, I blew it. You know? But then the next year, he ended up, you know getting like three or four guys signed wow. off of the Kendrick, you know, so he got, he had quite a few contracts out of the deal and he, and he had a lot of success on it. So it's, yeah, you know, um, it's awesome, man. And I train with Jorgen. I train with Randy. I train with all these guys that are getting this opportunity. So it's pretty sweet, man. You know, I was just talking to Jorgen today, you know, about setting up some training and mm -hmm. stuff for, for the Greg Hardy fight. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's it's good to see the, the recognition getting, uh, you know, everybody getting recognized. Like I mentioned before, you fought also twice in Bellator once, twenty ten and twenty eleven, and they did not choose to give you a multi fight deal, which is something that's like all over Bellator's history. There's a bunch of fighters, as I've researched for interviews, they ha had them there, didn't sign them. So I mean, it's it's almost like a, a good sign. It's clear you must be talented if they didn't sign you, almost. But but the question is, why didn't we see you during that fifteen year run in a Strike Force Dream one? championship elite xc or even pfl recently where nate andrews was very very good this past season uh during your run in the sport where yeah. were there ever close calls in fighting for some of those companies where or were you more type of guy other okay. yeah okay yeah there was, there was no there was definitely some close calls in bellator like um I, rem I remember there was a couple fights that we accepted that didn't happen and then there was a couple fights that they just i just couldn't do it with the time um you know i remember one time i think my son was born like one around the weekend that they wanted me to fight somebody, so I just couldn't do it, you know. But uh, you know, I, I Bellator is a great organization. You know, I know Rich because I've you know I corner John Doomer a lot when he fights with Bellator. And obviously, I coached Brennan Ward for years, so I know Rich Chow pretty well, man. He's such a cool dude, and uh, you know, we we tried to make a few things happen, but you know, it just you know it just didn't. You know, it is what it is. Bellator does a great job too. Those shows are awesome when they come to Mohegan Sun, man. Yeah. They, you know, they blow the roof off that place every time. So it's, it's pretty, man. So I'm a big fan of those guys. And, uh, you know, we have a couple guys that are going to be going to be fighting. You know, I'm not going to announce it yet, but they're going to be fighting in uh, yeah. March, I believe, okay. in the Mohegan Sun for Bellator. I'll be seeing those guys again. No, but so nothing ever anywhere else, of, you know, any other organization that were notable? Nothing ever no. came close. I always, you know, I always definitely mm -hmm. wanted to fight overseas for, like, 1FC or Dream or one of those. But yeah, it just never uh, happened. If there's – because I'm sure if – in terms of like what are the standout movements in your career and i'm sure a person might think okay the heavyweight championship for ces but is there like a a singular moment that it, it, when somebody says oh what was your favorite moments in the sport that always stick out to you other than the coaching because i know you mentioned the coaching has been some of the bigger ones but in terms of your personal career is there a certain moment where it was just like that kind of night and that kind of crowd energy and that kind of finish that it just always stands out like it just happened yesterday as a favorite moment during your career um, you know, it's, I always hate accepting short notice fights. Like, you know, when the guy's taking the fight with me on short notice, like this last, you know, last weekend, I just, cause I just usually <laughs> never do well. Like it usually never, you know, I always like last time, like I was mm -hmm. nervous as hell for the last fight because I was thinking about like the Josh <laughs> Parisian fight. I'm like, it's going to come in on one day's notice and do the spinning back fist. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> so it's, you know. But on the other end of that, I remember I felt like one of the fights that I just felt like the absolute best for was mm -hmm. was winning the title, the Travis View fight. You know, um, I don't know. It was like a three week camp. I like, you know, I I trained. I was I'm always in the gym, so I'm always in like decent shape. So it doesn't take me long to get into shape. But I was just like healthy. I was good going into that fight, and like I remember just not feeling like you know Travis View was a guy that I like I look up to, man. Like he was mm -hmm. such a savage in Bellator and. He had a crazy career, like, you know, and, and uh, was at the uh, back in the day when they had the teams. The, was it uh, IFL? I, I'm not the PFL. Yeah. 
the IFL, yes. Like he was on uh, Team Militant, I think, back then. And, uh, you know, I knew he was a tough, big, strong wrestler. And, but I just, I don't know. I just wasn't nervous. Everything was clicking. And I ended up winning that <laughs> fight in, like, 20 seconds. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's always yeah, good yeah. when you have moments like that that you just – it was not what I expected because I was mm-hmm. like, this dude's a tough wrestler. This is going to be kind of a tiny fight. I don't know what kind of shape he's in or whatever. And it ended up going by like this, like, so fast. I mean, granted, that's the fight where I broke my hand, like, in half. But, um, you know, fights like that, I think, are the ones that obviously are your favorite because it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. everything happens so fast and it goes by on the top of the fingers. And it's just like, oh, that was it. So, I, you know, I would say that was, you know, that's definitely one of my favorite fights. Is, is what are the thoughts of your that, family so. and friends on, on this decision to, to retire? Are, are they all four? Have they been pushing you to, to, to retire for a long time? Or are, are some of them, like, you feel like if you still love competing, you should still keep doing it? What What's the reaction of the people close to you on this? Yeah, you know, a lot of my friends are definitely happy. Like, you know, but again, people love going to my fights. They love fighting. You know, and I think that at CES, you know, I've, I've definitely – delivered a lot of like exciting knockouts man i think i have jesus i you know i've fought on tv between access tv and fight pass a, a lot i think the only time i lost was to absolute gooch and out of all those wins i think i've won by knockout or you know i've won by knockout or submission i think every time you know so i've definitely i've had a lot of exciting fights and, and people in rhode island man they're boxing fans you know rhode island mma is noobs even still you know like but there's a lot of it's it's mm-hmm. boxing heritage. Vinny Paz and Peter Manfredo Jr. and guys like that that have all started around Rhode Island. So there's a lot of boxing gyms around Rhode Island. So it's still, you know, the the local fans that go are all boxing fans. So as soon as the ground the fight hits the ground, they're all like, <laughs> ooh, the sick, you know? yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Don't understand it still, you know? They're kind of like the old school UFC fans. So it's you know it, it's uh. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, I, people like to see me fight because they like to see people get knocked out and, and, and stuff like that. And they know that, you know, I've always had that attitude, like, you know, kill or be killed attitude. Like, you know, I've lost some fights by TKO, but I've won the majority of them. Everybody gets clipped at some point. But, you know, my dad still, my dad will want me to fight <laughs> on 50. Like, he's never, you know, I'm in the cage the night and I'm like, listen, you know, I'm not going to be the but I think this is it, you know. Um, you know, I've had a good career, blah, blah, blah. My dad's <laughs> chanting one more fight in the back. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. He's a freak, you know what I mean? So he's, uh, he's, he loves it, man. My dad goes, listen, my dad goes to every fight, whether I'm coaching guys or whether I'm fighting. Like, you know, I'll see him, like, in the crowd, like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Like, you know, but he, so he loves it. He'll want me to fight till the day I'm 50 years old. So, but unfortunately, there's no masters. <laughs> Unless you're in Bellator. <laughs> Bellator seems to have an unofficial one. Yes, exactly. Um, it, it, like, so. It, you mentioned it a little bit before, like the next generation coming up, because you know guys like Calvin Cater, you know, and DaCosta are guys that were heavily influenced by you. Are you starting to see now, you know, and maybe give me some names that maybe people may not know about yet. They're still early in careers that are the guys that are now getting influenced by Cater and Fawn, like that that next generation. Do you, like are you seeing that? And also, like where do you see like New England MMA in five years? Like how how much of an influence is this really just the tip of the iceberg? Are you feeling that rush? Like, man, this is going to be like, you know, like the next big hotspot for the, for the UFC. There's so much talent that that hasn't been touched yet. No, I listen, I tell people, man, go to Lozon's on a Saturday and, uh, and, and you'll see the most talented guys in New England. There's no question about it. And, a lot of them are guys that are, you know, sparring partners of Font and Cater and, and, you know, guys like John Duma and guys like Mitch Raposo, man. Rich Raposo just fought this weekend who's mm. – there's a ton of hype behind him, and, and mm. it's for a good reason, man. This kid's really good. He's coached at, by Regiment Training Center. My buddy Brian and Tommy, these guys in Fall River, they do a great job, and mm. they coach Jorgen as well, Jorgen DeCastro. You know, they, they, they're like another gym that's kind of like, you know, unnoticed. Not a lot of people know about them. And – uh you know, those guys do a great job, but all those guys mm. cross train at Lausanne's, you know, so it's these, these guys, these up and coming guys, like the new crop of talent, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, I feel like, like I said, I started as a hockey player, you know, these guys have all been doing MMA for years, man, years and years and years. And guys like Mitch are only 20 or 21 years old. He's a baby, you know? So he's already got more experience than I just about ever had, man. You know, he's sparring with Fawn wow. and Cater at 20 years old while he's you know what I mean? And he's doing well. Like, they use him. You know, Rob Font doesn't like easy guys <laughs> in sparring. Like, he's not that guy. Crash cans. Like, you know, that dude, when he puts a camp together, he's like, listen, mm-hmm. I want the toughest guys available because I want to be the most prepared. When I go in there, I don't want to have to worry about who I'm fighting across the cage. Like, so, 
you know, he's being guys like Mitch and, and Duma are being brought in there for a reason, you know, because these guys are good, man. And they're, they're both, you know, going to be fighting at the next level. Duma already is. He's mm-hmm. signed with Bellator right now. I mean, and what's interesting, and I've interviewed Tyson Chardier a, a, a few times, and he talked to me about the last time that, you know, years ago, they were trying to put Rob and, and Calvin against each other. And there's this kind of thing about... No, bring people from outside the region to fight us. And, and, and like this idea of like building the area, not against each other, build them against other people and build – like I've never yeah. heard of anything like that for it. It's, and it's awesome. Like yeah. like what – what makes you know the area is it is it like a kind of thing like no one respected new england mma for a while so this kind of like you know it's us versus the world let's build this up like like where does that come from is it a shared idea like how that all kind of you know set, shake out no for sure and i think tyson has a big part to do with that and and i'll give you know i got to give jimmy birchfield and pat sullivan a ton of credit for that because if you look at all the guys that i've fought i think i fought one guy tyler king excuse me, was the only local guy that I fought. But at that time, it made sense. We were both like two. He was probably the top guy at heavyweight when I fought him, you know. But other than that, it's like, why would Rob and Calvin want to fight each other when they both should be going to the UFC? Because whoever loses that fight, it's going to be a setback. It's probably going to be another six months to a year before those guys get there. So I think, you know, a lot of these guys, like especially CS, Mm -hmm. like they, they realized that. And they were like, all right. If we get two guys that we know belong in the UFC, like let's just try to get both of them out, you know, there without fighting each other. You know, I think that's the best bet and that's the best way to go. Because um, I see it happen too much, man. You see two guys and I'm like, damn it, man. I hate this fight because I feel like both of these guys can both compete in the contender series this summer and then one of them loses and then, you know, that guy's going to get back on the bandwagon and who knows, it's going to take him a while to build his confidence back up to get there again, you know? So it's, it is tough, man. Like the matchmaking, it's, it's not an easy job, but... It's great to have companies like CES and, and Cage Titans as well. You know, Mike Colbert does a great job around here doing, so, you know, doing stuff like that. Like he'd always bring guys in for Randy Costa or, or for any of the guys, you know. So it's 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 definitely important and it definitely helps get guys to the next level in my right. opinion. Get more guys to the next okay, level. Okay, so I have you know? one final question and, and, and since you're a sports fan, maybe the most important question of all. You know, as a New Yorker, I don't have many New England friends. So, I, you know, I figured I'd ask you, but Greg... Mr. CES, why is Boston Boston sports full of cheaters? You got Cora with Red Sox, Patriots oh, Spygate, <laughs> Deflate Gate. I bet the Celtics cheated. New England likes cheaters, Greg. I'm not even a Yankee fan. I'm a Mets fan. What's going on? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that stuff just got dropped over the Patriots. Yeah. Listen, you know what I always tell people? I say oh. jealousy will get you nowhere. We. <laughs> You name a better town in the last 10 years. We've had a championship in all of our sports. So. <laughs> it's title town. It's title town. That's why everybody's jealous. And I'm sorry to say the Yankees and the Mets and the Rangers, they're not winning titles anytime soon. Should it be title town with an asterisk? <laughs> it could be. Or, you know, title town with a, you know, with a camera or a spy in the background. I get it. But, you know, if you're not cheating. You're not trying. I guess I'm all right, man.